university has had, and I believe it's a lot due to innovation. Um, I think that in general America is no longer going to be a low cost provider, that the success of our country is going to be on innovation, and I think in order to get there we need to have educated workforce, so I'm wondering where do you stand on the federal government funding higher education? Where do I stand on the federal government funding higher education? I think the federal government should help with higher education. It should help with, with uh, loans, it should help with scholarships, it should keep the same a general uh, principle of higher education operating because I think it's a good one. I think America high, American higher education is is uh, founded on sensible principles that will continue its improvement. I think Am American primary education is not. And uh, American higher education, meaning America's colleges and universities, are still among the best in the world. They are still the places where people want to come to be educated from all over the world. And that's a good thing. American K through 12 is not outperforming the rest of the world. K through 12, we got a lot of countries outperforming us. Now, why is that? What's the if you analyze this carefully, what's the how is it that we could have the best higher education in the world, and we have now a weaker K through 12 system? And that's really dangerous because those are the kids that are ultimately going to move into higher education or not get in, or, or have inadequate educations compared to the kids they have to compete against around the world. So what's the difference between the two? Why does one operate so well and the other not nearly as well? The difference is that American higher education is based on a quintessential American principle that always means improvement called choice and competition. When, 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 if the federal government helps you to get a higher education, the federal government does not direct you where to go to school. The federal government gives you a scholarship, if you get that, or a private organization gives you a scholarship. The federal government helps you with a loan, or a private organization helps you with a loan, but it doesn't direct you to go to a certain place. It doesn't order you to go to a certain place. And you get to choose the college you want to go to. The community college, the four-year college, the master's program, or the doctor's program. You get to pick it. Whether you're rich, middle class, or poor, the principle of choice and competition is operating. So bad colleges get voted out of existence because nobody can direct people to go to a bad college. That doesn't happen in K through 12 by and large. The government controls that completely. It demands and requires and by law directs you as to where you have to send your child in school. And the school could be great. The school could be awful. And the awful schools are continued to be maintained because there's no, there's no principle of choice going on here. So I would give, I'd give parents control over their children's education. Allow them choice. Take the money that we're spending, turn it back to them in scholarships, choice programs, vouchers. Let them select the school their child is going to go to. A school can be a public school, a charter school, parochial school, private school. We've got to have competition operating. If we don't do that, our educational system is going to deteriorate. Uh, read, read the portion of the new president of France's book on education in France, Nicolas Sarkozy, who I think is still vacationing in New Hampshire. The new president of France says basically the same thing I just said about France, that it's going to need to introduce considerably more parental choice into their educational system if you're going to have any chance of saving it. Well, he's right for France, and, he's, and that's right for America, and that's what I would do about it.